Welcome to MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sancho, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Or am I coming to you virtually as a VTuber? Not yet. But one day I will cross that uncanny valley. Okay, seriously, are, are, are you going to? Mm, thought about it. I haven't really committed to it. I see, because uh, no joke, uh, that seems to be... Go with the, the trend for most. If I'm not mistaken, um, Saber Spark did it. He may have. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I I, I do know one musician, uh, Eurobeat Brony, did it. And Let's see here. Yeah, but you know what they yeah. say about trends. They eventually die down. Look at also the doing NFTs. Us. <laughs> also doing us today, Jacob. Hey, Jacob. <laughs> Yeah, hey, everybody. Yeah. No, in, in all honesty, the VTuber thing is it's a trend, but it's a very fascinating trend where you can still be a personality with uh, with your own style, possess whatever it is, and uh, people will still like it. I mean, it, it started out in Japan and uh, across uh, it spread across the globe and whatnot, and. When you look at it, why is it so popular? Is uh, the fact that you can play a role and still have your immunity? So that, yeah. Anonymity. Anonymity? Hmm. Yes. It's a, it's a mouthful of a word no matter what language you speak. Anonymity. Anonymity, yes. But yeah, you, you can be a cute anime cat guy and uh, say whatever you want and still keep your face hidden or your yeah face hidden why not people and people still like you unlike the way back in the days where we have our ocs and whatnot and uh slowly gradually uh, we, 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 we slowly gradually um change into uh, on screen and whatnot and if uh, i don't know uh, Silver, I ask you this because I, I think you're in the spotlight for this. Uh-oh. Would you have ever thought that you show your face to the publics? I mean, uh, well, honestly, the first time I did, it didn't go well. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. What happened? I did the ice bucket challenge. Oh, yeah. And. and People did not respond well to seeing my face. They Apparently, they heard my voice and thought that I would be this cross between Fabio and Antonio Banderas. <laughs> no. And instead, they, they got... Uh, well, I remember one YouTube comment was, Wow, fat, bald, and white. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Uh, that's mean, but I, I, I guess... Well, I'm most, I was mostly confused by, why are you surprised I'm white? <laughs> Do I give an impression otherwise? That is true. That, that is true. It could be racist of me to say that, huh, why would people think that you're not white? Especially me being Asian from Malaysia, thinking that most of the people online are either white or black. I would have thought Hispanic and whatnot, unless you have an accent but I doubt most American would have an Hispanic accent if they're if they live long there or born in the States yeah so it was all very confusing <clears throat> but yeah people didn't people w- r- rather wanted uh, their fantasy of how I looked over the reality so it, for a while there I was wearing masks to conventions because I thought people wanted silver quill and not you know me uh, yes, you, the person uh, named Steve, was it? <laughs> oh, yes. Still don't know who, who <laughs> decided my name was Steve. I, I think they <laughs> thought that silver, uh, you start with an S, so why not we put a Steve, like it's an S, and he looks like a Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just making chit chat too. Uh, bonus for the Patreons. This is, this is kind, of, this is the kind of 
thing that you can get if you're subscribed to the Patreons. This is bonus feature that we decide, well, I decide to spring up on them here right now. Uh, thank you for the v- VTuber intro, Silver. Oh, boy. Sure thing. <coughs> I mean, of course, there are some people uh, on online anymore, just in general, that do use, well, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, made up an identities. Like, do you know uh, one? One, yeah. Uh, you're talking about One Punch Man's artist? Yeah. Well, yeah. author in general. All right. Yeah. He never shows his face. Oh. He just has the One Punch Man's uh, head as a profile. Mm. Or the author for oh, okay. or the author for B Star School who goes about with the chicken head. But uh, the B-Star thing is actually really strange on top of that because uh, her father is a very popular uh, mangaka. Is he? Yeah. Huh. So that, Do you know so, that? What did he do? What I, did he do? I forgot. Like, it's really popular. I don't want to say berserk, but something really popular. Um, let me try. No, you know what? I'm going to do that later. That's going to be next week's thing for the Patreon. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, before I move on, Silva, I think you, you, you look good. You, 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 you look good for you. So, who? Uh, I, uh, for me? I mean, people. I'm sorry. For, uh, for an overweight, middle-aged white man, you look pretty good. <laughs> That's Silva, you, you, <laughs> <laughs> you uh, take steps to improve yourself. And that's, I find that, uh, I, I appreciate that, that you're willing to take the time to um, realize your flaws and go work on them. You think they're flaws? Go work on them. If, if people, like, if you think that, oh, I think I myself is overweight, I shall go to the gym and do stuff. And if I'm not mistaken, you did, right? Well, yeah, I do. Do you still do it? Because I... Yeah. Heard, okay, that's good. Because I heard a lot of people say that they don't after the pandemic. <laughs> no, no. I got... I For a time, I worked out from home via social media call, which was very awkward <laughs> trying to, well, you know, do a workout where with a computer telling you what to do. <laughs> Wait, don't, that, uh, don't, don't we do that on a daily basis? <laughs> Yeah, but a computer with a with a trainer's voice. <laughs> We're not quite at that point yet, although I know that day is probably fast approaching. Oh, yes. Uh, but still, but still. I mean, keep it up, man. Good job. Yeah. Oh, as for me, I have flaws. Anyway. Sorry. It's not, now we can talk about a, wor- a world where everyone is sort of unhealthily small bodies and giant heads. <laughs> uh, that, that could mean so many things, Silver. And uh, the one I'm thinking right now is Murdoch. Murdoch. Are you thinking about that or something else? Well, I mean, there's there's the comical Modoc cartoon, or there's the uh, somewhat underperforming Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. Yeah. To be honest, take I take your pick. To be honest, I love the Disney Plus Modoc. Uh, voiced by um, Scuba Pants, whose name is that? Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, if I can't remember the person's name, that's bad. Uh, Scuba Pants is Patton Oswalt. <clears throat> yeah, voiced by him, and technically that is a more compelling character. <laughs> uh, it's like he had a whole series to him. Indeed, he did. He had family that he loved. And their kids are floating in that godforsaken device. And somehow he's Jewish. They all float down here. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to stop that and continue on with what we're going to do today. And that is, we are going to review My Little Pony Equestria Girls Roller Coaster Friendship. In this special, Rarity's new job as a fashion designer for a theme park parade show jeopardized her friendship with Applejack and they must settle their differences in order to figure out why their friends are mysteriously vanishing. Ooh. Um, and as usual, 
um, first impressions are in order and silver. <laughs> well, to be honest, this one really didn't stick with me. There wasn't a whole lot to really grab, except for the shipping between Applejack and Rarity. So much shipping. Shipping? I, I didn't see anything. Did you have your eyes closed? No, oh, I had it open. Like, what are you talking about? Are you kidding? When they they hug and they embrace, they blush in front of one another. They're good friends, I mean, Silver. Really good friends. Yes, oh, Silver. Yeah. Oh, Why yeah. must you ever bring a Kuwait with being sort of romantically involved? <laughs> oh, I just got certain vibes, like, you know, an earthquake. Uh, you know, I mean, at least it makes more sense in this context rather than what the last problem did. I mean, should we even address that before, like after first impressions? Because I think we should address that after first impressions. Oh boy! Anyway, anything else to add, Silver? Uh, well, that's the thing. Most this really didn't leave a, a lasting impact for me. I mean, even the the head antagonist really just sort of falls by the wayside. That is true. That is true. Uh, so you know, sorry, uh, sorry, I can't offer like greater insight. I will have a comparison when we finally get to the villain, uh, well, antagonist. All right. But now is not that time. All right. All right. Anyway, Jacob, what about you? Huh, well, uh, thing is, uh, back when the pony craze started and the Equestria Girls came out. I was one uh, in one of those camp. Uh, in, hold on, I was in the camp where people were against the Questia girls because, well, from the mentality where we started off, well, we got this uh, entertaining, anthropomorphic uh, talking horses. They got a lot of adventure, etc. And then suddenly they started to put out these uh, human versions from another dimension. Then, well. I sort of imagine that the, because of this, the main MOP line was going to get signed light and, well, the human versions are going to get promoted ma massively. But as it turns out, that was wrong in the end. And, well, let's just say that over the years, I sort of got a bit more soft on the initial criticism of it. All right. So... Yeah, but in general, I didn't really much. Uh, I didn't really watch so much of this uh, series. The only episode uh, special outside of it was the one where the, somehow the Storm King's magic uh, entered the human world. That's about okay. the only episode I watched. I remember that. One. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. But what about the assignment for today? Did you watch this one? Yeah, I luckily I did since well, the the old demo piece is now officially on YouTube, so you can just watch full episodes. So it was a lot easier than trying to find and pirate on the thing. Well, uh, it was um, okay, more mostly. <laughs> <laughs> we at the NBA show do not endorse piracy in any form, except when you know it, it's actual booty. I, I'll say this. I'll say this. Privateering, har, har. We, we condone privateering if it's not available at all. Like, like the Transformers! Can, uh, the game, the, the, the amazing game, War for Cybertron, yes. is not yes. available anywhere. Exactly. I mean, I want to give you money to play that awesome game, but it's not anywhere. I'd so, give more money so we could all play it together. Yeah. So it's not my fault. It's your fault. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway, as for me, this, oh man, when Silver said that this was not memorable at all, yeah, man. <laughs> I, I didn't remember much about this one. The only thing I remember was the white room. That's about it. And in the white room with no curtains. Yep, but still, like not nothing. The the bad guy, I even forgot that she existed. 
uh, the theme park. Like, wait, what? There was a theme park and what? Oh, and like, seriously, this this is just one of those special where I like the concept. I like where this is going, but uh, the execution was unmemorable. So anyway, <clears throat> before uh, it, before we continue on, if you have not watched this, pause sure and go do so because we're gonna do a lot of spoilers. Welcome back. So, like I mentioned before, um, we're going to address the elephant in the room. And that is Applejack and Rarity. And Pro Shipper here, Silver. Wow. Well, I... Well, I got no beef because I've always... I'm a big fan of Opposites Attract. And... Uh, mostly because it's it's one of those situations where the characters are required to make compromises and grow in order to work and rarity and applejack they they are probably the most opposing viewpoints of the main six or in this case the humane seven mm -hmm. and so yeah i'm i'm a fan but the fact that it never really went anywhere and then it, Although I did find it kind of funny with a later short when they were on the summer cruise, one, yes. Applejack falls for a Rule 63 uh, Applejack. That what? is not real, if I'm right. His personality was not real. He was kind of a faker. Yeah, the personality was not real, going for British rather, uh, but he, but he did look like Applejack. If I'm not mistaken, that was the a male other special, right? Uh, what was it? Summer? Well, now I've got to look that this up. It's hard to it's hard to remember all of this. Yeah, it's the uh, spring breakdown. <clears throat> yep. The, the one after this, if I'm not mistaken, according to the wiki page. Well, either which way. Uh, Jakob, I get the sense you, you don't know Rule 63? Gender bent. Yes. Yes. Mm, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Quiet, quiet. Oh, yes, I, I do. Yes, I do see it now. Yes, yes. Uh, same skin tone, blonde hair. Yep, that, that is an Applejack. All you need to do is put a hat on him. Yes, indubitably. So, so even when they try to introduce a heterosexual ship, it's still Apple Rarity and Applejack. <laughs> oh, the Storm King special. Uh huh. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. The, uh, even I don't remember that subplot. <laughs> You know, oddly, I remember that better than I do this one. Mainly because I thought it was so terribly stupid. <laughs> oh, man. The, the only thing I remember about the spring breakdown is that human po human uh, girls go to Pony World and we get to see hijinks in Zoo. Not much, but still. <laughs> All the hijinks. Human Twilight becomes Pony Twilight and... When the two meet, the reality doesn't collapse in on itself. Yeah, oh boy. That's still. But, oh man. Well, either way, we're uh, we're talking about a different special here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Uh, still continue. All good things in time. Or bad things. Yeah. Depending on your view. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. Uh, anywho. Um, Jacob, what do you think, man? Like, the Apple Jack Rarity relationship for this one. Like... They lay on tech. Like, you have to be blind, deaf, and mute to not realize that they are trying to ship them together. Yeah, that's really not uh, how I put it. It's really not uh, hard to miss. Hold on. Did I say that right? <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, uh, as far as I'm concerned about this, I. In general, as a personal uh, personal rule, I'm basically against any form of uh, romantic relationships between main six in general. I mean, at least in this case, it sort of makes sense, as I mentioned earlier, and not like how Les probably introduced the whole thing, which makes absolutely no sense. 
But I basically don't uh, support uh, support the intermain so... section. Sorry, <clears throat> I I don't really support the uh, inter uh, main six shipping in general because it goes against the dynamic that I have. Ah, uh, okay. So mostly hit cannon reason then. Uh... I don't know. Can we call it a head cannon? I mean, I mean, well, it's like, so, it's like uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, way back in the day when I watched Sailor Moon, there was this filler arc for Sailor Moon R, where they were fighting the well in a, in America it was called a Doom Tree, mm -hmm. and the question came up: Can a boy and a girl just be friends? without being romantically attached. And this was the early 90s. The answer was no. <laughs> no, the answer was no, because a lot of fans uh, shipped Sailor Jupiter with a friend. You know, just someone they were close to. So I always thought, I was never a big fan of that ship because I always thought, well, then the answer is no. And now here, well, same premise. It's just that both, par both parties are girls. Mm -hmm. Can they be friends, or is there a romantic aspect to it? Yeah. But I'm opposed to the whole thing, mostly because, they, as I said, it's the dynamic that the main six have between one another and that they're friends. The moment when you start bringing romance into it, it's sort of... Well, I, I don't know what, uh, how to describe it, but it uh, it ruins the... What do you... What do you Group dynamic? Well, yes, but... I don't want to sound like that weirdo, but oh, no, uh, it no. ruins the purity no. of friendship. I mean, it's understandable. Like, this is just your opinion, and you have a right to your own opinion. And if you feel that way because of reasons, I mean, yeah, it's your own opinion. Like, whoever disagrees, well, tough, because you don't <laughs> agree with them. I mean, we're all here, we, me, Silver, here, want to know your reasoning, and... Yeah, we we can get it. We can get it. Yeah. But again, at least in this case, it makes more sense than what Applejack and Rainbow Dash. Yeah, <laughs> that one came out of nowhere. You put two together that are almost exactly the same, or well, at least they got the egos are exactly as big, and they're like uh, oil and fire. But still, but... Not in a good way. Yeah. Silver, um, was I uh, on point when I say that relationship came out of nowhere? Well, I mean, eh, how do I put it? It's always that whole, you ship them because they're antagonistic towards one another. Oh, yeah, that's not and... gonna, that's a really healthy relationship right there. <laughs> well, I never, I never claimed it was a healthy one, just that people seem to like it. Yeah. I, I, uh, now my uh, how shall I put this I thought you want to have a same sex shipping go right ahead mm -hmm. but make it make sense have to ma did you have to make Rainbow Dash the rainbow mained uh, more some slightly more tomboyish of the main six that is a stereotype uh, I still remember So I when... feel... I f no, you go hmm? finish. So, it's like, I'm all for... I'm fine with it, just not rainbow. Let's avoid that stereotype. Yeah, yeah. I, I see where you're coming from, because, like, they're really throwing pandas at us. Pandas? Panda ring, you get it? Oh, panda. Ah, nice. <laughs> no, like... I still remember way back in the early days of fandom... There was this meme of Rainbow Dash is out in the picture, and she goes, Why does everybody think I'm, a, I'm gay? I was just born with the rainbow, man. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But but that's the thing. But that's the thing. Um, I, I'll give my opinion on Rarity Applejack first. Um, this one, I feel like they really build it up. They build it up, they set it up, and it didn't blindside you when... Um, it, like, it didn't really blindside you when... Um, you, the the tension was there. 
like one of the few things I told Jacob when we have our just discussions and whatnot is that I don't mind um, a LGBTQ plus character in a show. What I do mind is uh, corporatization, uh, corporate rainbowing. I think that's what they call. That irks me to no end because this character is here because they're pandering to the community because we need to get them a uh, we need to get them uh, attracted or we need to get their attention onto this brand so they will support us. And in all honesty, that to me feels force. When you build it up naturally, gradually, uh, you don't slam the thing in the person's face, then like, I don't mind because it's natural. And with this one, uh, maybe I haven't really watched the whole Equestria Girls, or I don't really remember the whole Equestria Girls series that much. But yeah, I can I can dig it. Like I can dig their relationship and whatnot. Like they're slowly building it up. Um, if we're just looking at um, roller coaster here, we see that yeah, uh, they want to do stuff, but. Uh, they have conflicts and in the end, everything works out. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I kind of like the relationship thing. Like, I, I, I would really love it to be pushed to the extreme or be pushed to where it can be pushed without uh, raising the age limit. <clears throat> but, uh, that's besides the point. Now, for Rainbow Dash and Applejack. That one came out of nowhere, man. That blindsided me. Like, wait, what? Were they? Are they? How were they? <laughs> and for Rainbow Dash, it especially doesn't make sense considering the, well, the job she's working on. That I don't I'm sure, mind. I'm sure Just Scorcher is a military brawn and would have a few words to say about that. I mean... I'm not sure I understand. I mean, Applejack's not in the military. No, Rainbow Dash. And I meant Rainbow Dash. Well, uh, people I mean, people I, in the military can still get married. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, but I do think it might be a bit easier if the... Well, the person you're met is a bit, I don't know, close to home. Or if you're living on a military base, if we're not going to the whole well mission thing where somebody's away from home for years on end but there's a huge difference think, yeah. uh, Jacob because um, I, I understand what you're, where you're coming from but you're forgetting that Rainbow Dash here is a high ranking officer in Equestria and if she even goes far it will be just at the base where the Wonderbolts are and since she's a fast flyer um, going to the farm and to the base won't be an issue for her. <laughs> Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. Oh, boys. But yes. Gotta go faster, 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 faster. Uh, but in honesty, man, like, there's nothing wrong with the Applejack Rainbow Dash ship. It's, it's just that when? I, I, I never noticed that. I more notice Rarity and Applejack ponies rather than Rainbow Dash. Yeah. Like, to me, I never seen Rainbow Dash be attracted to the same gender or the opposite gender. The closest thing I see was she going gaga over Spitfire. Hmm. And that was season one. Well, that was more fangirly. Yeah. Than... That was the closest thing. <laughs> so... Like I said, it came out of nowhere. <clears throat> but anyway, let's get on to the <laughs> special. Uh, Me too. Boys. So anyway, we start off the episode with a title crawl. Roller Coaster of Friendship Part 1. Okay, so we are introduced to this theme park called Equestria Land. Equestria Land, right? Equestria Land. Yeah. 
<laughs> and if saying it three times will not make it appear. I, I, I don't even know what this is. Like when you okay, here's the thing. Why would they name a theme park Equestria Land? What's the inspiration? From what I can tell, their inspiration is probably from the Pony Universe, the Equestria. But how would they know that? Like, what, I, th- th- this raises a lot of questions. Already, I'm complaining. What? <laughs> anyway, moving on, moving on. Oh, God. Hey, what? 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 <laughs> yeah, moving on. Sorry. We are introduced to Equestria Land, and there's a float. Um, we see them practicing and whatnot, and we see the and the one a character, a, a character. Uh, she says, "Wait, stop, 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 stop! What's this? Why don't they have any color? What, what's going on here?" And they're dressed in shapes, <laughs> shapes and no colors, which is odd. And she asks that, "Why? Why?" And the designer for the parade says that you keep changing your mind and we don't know what you want so this is the latest update and she goes on saying that ah we we have uh, i have a vision and you need to follow it because this is the parade blah 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 blah, and a lot of people are going to see and i am the pr person for this parade or this theme park and that already raises a red flag for me a PR person's job is not this. But let's put that aside. So she says uh, this thing that uh, BYBB, be yourself but better. And uh, the designer just says, yeah, I quit. And with that, uh, she stresses out and eats her salad and whatnot. And before she eats her salad, uh, she complains a bit, and suddenly Equestria Magic comes along and hacks her phone. I guess someone's gonna have to explain that to me because I'm not quite sure how that works. Like Equestria Magic from Equestria is so, somehow looking into the human world. Yes, is that how basically all the specials start? Yes, I mean uh, pretty much. Uh, uh, yes. Well, that would I... yeah. That would explain the strong king part, but that's a whole nother can of worms, so let's just leave mm, it. Probably next time, but still. Um, so anyway, her phone gets hacked, and yeah, she, she, she thought, like, hey, you know what? Before I eat my meal, let's have a uh, picture of the meal so I can post it on... Ah, uh, Grown. Their, their, their own universe of Snapchat? What, what do they call? Snap Grab or something like that? Something like that. Yeah, something like that. Oh, boy. Uh, pick one social media app and just use it. <clears throat> so anyway, she posts, uh, she takes a picture and her food is gone. And she discovered that, huh, I can change the food into other things. But it's just a hologram. This would make things better. Ooh, I have ideas. That's it. So... We join uh, with our heroes at the mall where we see Rarity and Applejack stressing out about uh, the job application that they uh, sent. Uh, Since the new theme park is opening, they decide to kind of work at the Caramel Apple Store. So the both of them can work together and um, spend the summer together and why not say yay. And... They're nervous about not getting the job and so on. And the rest of the girls come in to cheer them up, saying that, hey, it's no problem. I'm sure you'll get it. And um, a email comes in and it states that Applejack didn't get the job. Rarity didn't get the job, but she got the position of lead designer for the parade. Wait, what? <laughs> Silver, am I wrong to say that Rarity is underqualified for this? Well, she's still in high school. I mean, she'd have to have done something rather exceptional, like win a design contest on a professional level to warrant such attention. That is true. 
course, I'm still hung up on the whole, they're at the mall to check their, their emails. It's like, yeah, I totally remember getting together with my friends at the mall to stare at our phones the whole time. No, you don't do that. No, but then I didn't get together with my friends at malls, period. <clears throat> I think we come from a different generation, Silver. These youngins and their of, mobile phones and their malls with juices and stuff. Very, very much. Although, well, we did have juices at the mall back then. Oh, true. I mean, Orange Julius, it's mostly just sugar with a slight orange taste, but gosh darn if it wasn't delicious. I didn't have any friends growing up. <laughs> oh, come now, Norman. That's not true. Surely. Uh, for dramatic purposes. <laughs> but yes, um, continuing on. Unless anybody wants to add, uh, chime in. I'm good. All right, then. So, um, yes. Uh, they, they, Rarity, they get the job. And Rarity says, oh, uh, Applejack, you didn't get it. Uh, uh, never mind, Rarity. If, I, if you didn't go, uh, sorry, if you didn't get it, I won't take mine. And Applejack says, nah, this this is have been, this been your lifelong dream. Uh, you should go get it. And you can see that she's really she's trying to be really supportive of her best friend's dream and when Applejack says yeah go ahead Rarity's just excited she, she's giddy with joy and whatnot and um, they decide to well just to hang out more I guess and we don't I, I don't really understand the timeline here but yeah um, Applejack just says um I hope they didn't replace my old job, which they did, and somehow bulk making smoothies don't make sense for me, man. And it's bread like he isn't even good at it. Yeah, man. No, he's <laughs> he wears many hats. No, he's amazing. Think about it. He shake the juicer to make juice. How do you even do that? With determination. The sight of this juicer fills you with determination. <laughs> anyway, moving on to Rarity, which I think she straight away goes to Equestria Land to meet up with... Ah, yes, I forgot to name the person, did I? Uh, uh, Vignette Valencia. This name is going to strip me over because it has a G, but you don't say the G. What? What? Her name is Vignette. And when you spell it, it's V-I-G-N-E-T-T-E. So looking at it, it's tripping me up. I'll never understand English language when they use silent letters. I, I'm sure that Vignette is not an English word. <laughs> Let's see here. Vignette. Over here, Vignette is an, uh, a highway pass for cars. How do you spell that? Well... Jacob, I, I'm I'm really Vignetta. Uh, yeah, Vignetta. V I G or just V I N J E T A. <laughs> Where did Vignetta? <laughs> yeah, where's the J in that? Vinjet? Vignetta. Yeah. Vignetta. Wait, I don't. I still don't hear a hard J in that. Also, I will. I will defend English mm -hmm. in that vignette is a French word. Ah, <laughs> so. So, I mean, you, you, I can understand the frustration of silent letters, but you got to take it up with the French, not I. <laughs> well, we don't use uh, English pronunciation for, um, for certain letters. I mean, my name alone is basically the point of that. It's Yaka. <laughs> it's not Jaka. Mm -hmm. And, oh boy, if you are in Spain, H is a J and J is a H. Wait, what? <sighs> anyway, continuing on, Vignette here, or uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, Vignette, Vignette. Uh, uh, Vignette here uh, meets up with Rarity, introduces her and whatnot, saying how awesome she is, blah, blah, blah. And um, I think Rarity kind of says, hey, you, you know, for the parade, if you would like, me and my bands can perform. I mean, we're kind of popular. We're YouTube, sorry, we're. Horse famous, 
and she says the band name, the Rain Booms. And this clicks with um, Vignette saying that, huh, that name, why have I heard that name? She Googles it and says, oh, you guys, oh, cool. You know what? Sure, perform. But one of the few things that irks me, irks me, the F, man, it's just that saying that, I have three million followers. <laughs> Look at me. Look at all these numbers that I have. Mm, I'm super famous and important. Look at me. Uh, it's, it's oozing people over this one. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to pause here. Silver, what do you think? Well, I mean, if, if that really bothers you, you could always try to phrase it like Mad Max. Uh, witness me! <laughs> witness! <coughs> but, but, okay, Vin Vignette Valencia. But, by the way, uh, I believe Valencia is... A, is a Spanish well, let's see here. Uh, yep, a province in eastern Spain. Formerly of the Moorish Kingdom, so... Yeah. yeah. But no Moor-ish. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... Vignette Valencia... Reminds me of Screwball from the Spider-Man game. Oh, that one. Oh, God. Oh. A of an antagonist whose entire worldview is shaped by social media. And they're standing on it. And there's a very good reason why Screwball was considered the most hated character of the entire game. Permission sucks. Yes, it does. Those, especially all those screams about photo bombing and whatnot. So, and I should put it: a, a character who's solely driven by social media is actually a very shallow, uninteresting character. And so, right off the bat, she's far more forgettable than. Uh, well, I say I'm talking forgettable, but now I'm struggling for names. Wallflower Blush yeah, yeah, yeah. and the, the Sirens. I mean, the Sirens ha at least had a world-conquering or at least magically driven reason for their for their uh, attempt at popularity. I mean, they hunger for uh, being popular. Or at yes, least they, actual... they, they feed on the strife of others. Mm-hmm. Yes. But that's not happening here. There's no reason for her to be so antagonistic. And so, therefore, you're just like, well, that was a waste of time. She's just vain. Yeah. I mean, they did kind of, what you call this, uh, address the thing where, oh, no, equestrian magic is corrupting them. Oh, corrupting her. That's why she's evil. Ooh. Look at her evilness. Well, that's the other thing that bugs me. Why, it, at this point, every time someone gets equestrian magic, it's evil and corruptive. And you're like, well, is that equestrian magic? Or does this world just suck? It's like everyone is a terrible person. Whereas in Equestria, everyone's all friends. It's like wow, that is a very cynical view of the human world. But but to... though I have to admit, not entirely inaccurate at yeah, times. It's also true. true. But no, man. Like the excuse that they say that oh, equestrian magic corrupts the Valencia. That's why she's doing all this thing. No, 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 no. She's just crappy. It's it's her default mode. No, there's, there's no forgiving it. All the action she's, she's done, and she's little... done of her own free will. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, she's a crappy little human. I mean, I mean, uh, same was the case for uh, Sunset Shimmer. Sunset Shimmer's different. I mean, she was a pony. Power got to her head and whatnot. I mean, uh, to take a better example of this is uh, who was the film director's niece? Oof, that was. Forgotten oh, time. Juniper Montage. Yeah, like her. That, you can really tell that, yeah, uh, Equestrian Magic really affected her. But she was already uh, pretty unlikable. Mm -hmm. True. I mean, she said, 
she sabotaged her uncle, assuming that she could be the star, which was the furthest thing from sane or rational you can get. I mean... Still, I'm rather, I'm actually proud of myself that I can remember her because I didn't think she was all that memorable. Yeah, that is also true. <laughs> yeah, but no, uh, w w when I say, like, for Juniper, like, it's one of those things where I feel like she... How do I put this? The reason why I say that she became better later on is that the 180 of her evilness. Like, she was bad after getting blessed by Rainbow Friendships. She became, well, less bad, more tolerable. And she became more understanding. So, yay. With this one? Nah, man. But, anywho, uh, we, we, we're jumping off ahead. So, I'm gonna turbo charge this. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna turbo charge this because Rarity calls Applejack, and Applejack's working on the farm. Um, mushing apples and say that how are you um are you feeling great and whatnot um okay cool i uh, hope you're doing well uh, i'll come and drop by later and watch uh, see you and hang out stuff yeah cool and the girls in honesty timeline here is just wibbly wobbly uh, the girls go to lululand and they meet up with the friends and whatnot and you know they just go play uh when they arrive, they see uh, this one tall woman uh, kind of being surrounded by a lot of people and taking pictures. Applejack here says, uh, who's that character there? I, I don't recognize her. And the girls just say, oh no, um, that's uh, Vignette Valencia. She's a popular influencer. Oh, sing that. Just makes me hurl. Oh God! Silver. Welcome to the club. Oh God! <laughs> Silver, take off over a little bit, man. I'm I'm feeling not great. <laughs> wow, she's she's actually made you physically ill. Kind of. Just saying the word influencer makes me. Ugh, I feel dirty. Well, uh, basically. There's a rift form between Applejack and Rarity as they just don't get to spend time together and the job is actually causing friction. Meanwhile, Vignette realizes that not that she can actually digitize the rain booms and uh, make them play their holograms play in any style of music she desires. So one by one, she starts uh, abducting them into what appears to be a completely negative white space. Somewhat similar, in fact, to Juniper Montage's abduction uh, of the Rain Booms before, while Starlight Glimmer was in town. But that one was much cooler. <laughs> and, of course, Fluttershy is the only one who uh, acknowledges the stress salad, which I have to ask very seriously, what the frig is a stress salad? <laughs> what about a salad is going to reduce your stress level? Um, do you know... Oh, I'm the uh, stupid don't tell. Do, do you know about stress eating and whatnot? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, but you're supposed to eat delicious food you know, that's not good for you, but that's part of why it tastes so good. I'm thinking it's just that, okay, instead of eating, you know, uh, unhealthy food, just eat salad and that can uh, reduce your stress, probably, maybe, I don't know. I find that sus. Incredibly sus. All the sussiness. <laughs> and we've seen Rarity got, uh, gorge herself on buckets of ice cream. Hey, ice cream's awesome, yes. man. Yeah, Rarity knows what's what. She, and yet she never gains a pound. I hate her so much. As you know of Silver, she's in this series. She's just a teenager. Just wait until she hits her twenties. Then, well, then she'll probably take on anime proportions <laughs> and snap in a in a strong <clears throat> wind. Nah, man. Nah, man. Like to be honest, uh, from what I saw when she got older in um, G. In season nine, um, some people are drawing her to be a bit chubby and old, and probably a loner, which is sad. 
Oh, uh, well, that that's a topic we can we can go on for quite a while. Not here, not now. Later. But either which way. Uh, well, let's see here. Basically, the entire crew is trapped, and Twilight is now... Well, it gets remodeled to sort of a boy band. Rainbow is... What would I call that? 60s style? I think so. 50s, you, you know, with the skit, uh, skirt with the poodle and whatnot. Th those were popular, right? Yeah. I'm going to say yes because I wasn't alive at the time, and it's rare that I get to say that. <laughs> uh, Sunset, boy, she gets the oldest treatment. Oh. She's like Victorian era. Really? No. And that... And I'm not even sure where Pinky's from. I barely recognize Pinky in the screenshot of her style. But basically, uh, eventually Rarity, however, manages to fend off because she's the one character with the defensive spell. I mean, you wouldn't want to see a battle between Valencia and Pinky as Pinky would be trying to explode her head. <laughs> Okay, I take that back. I totally want to see Pinky versus Valencia. Oh, wait, so, oh my goodness. With head explosions. When, when you just say Pinky, like, I, I'm seeing the screenshot right now, I'm, and I'm trying to find where Pinky is, and because of the hologram, the color are just a bit off. And what did she do? She, She's the drummer. I know, what did she do? Pinky, Pinky, that's not, that's not Pinky. She looks like a secretary. Uh, yeah, it's uh, very strange. She's normal. Although I will say that, but unlike, uh, I guess Fluttershy is the only one who comes out ahead on this, as they would reuse that punk look for the shorts of the uh, backstage pass yeah, 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 story. Yeah, 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 oh yeah, yeah, I was gonna mention that. It looks a bit familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man. Okay. One of the few reasons. So. Oh, oh no, okay. sorry, I'm interrupting. Uh, one of the few reasons why Fluttershy is best pwned for me or to me is because one reason. During episode season one, episode 26, the best side ever, when she went ballistic, screaming at the top of her lungs, saying, you gotta love me. Works on me, babe! <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the fact that you have a timid character one eating into a vicious um, person or character like showing her quote unquote darkest deepest thing you know I'm a it's... bit disappointed that that never got far later later in the series that you can know of like season 2 they did it again but um, getting my own track I love it when a character does a 180 and for this outfit, costume, and whatever, is just awesome. But Fluttershy doesn't play the bass. If I'm not mistaken, she plays the tambourine, right? Well, that's apparently Valencia. She really is, likes guitars as, and basses, because there's now three of them. Uh, lead guitar, uh, backup, and bass. Yeah, whatever. <clears throat> But yeah, the, the 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 outfit does not make sense at all. <sighs> Until she fa falls in love with uh, the Crunchers. Oh, yes. So basically now it's down to uh, Applejack and Rarity. As Applejack's been conspicuously absent, and Rarity is the only one who was able to block the blast. Mm -hmm. So... Jump in a bit ahead. Uh, Applejack is watching the park attendees, but feels kind of bad. Uh, but then, of all the things, uh, Applejack discovers Twilight and Sunset and all the others. They weren't in a cyberspace void. They were in just a white room. I mean... With no curtains. I mean, Silver, don't you have that in your tea park? That's that, that, that's that, that's a normal thing. Don't you have it? Well, that's that's the thing that I'm I'm simultaneously confused and impressed. 
It's like they have a completely empty white room that is not being used for storage or anything. So that's a complete waste of space. And yet it is so freaking clean. Do you know how hard you have to work to keep a purely white room clean? No, but... The janitorial services at this place must be top-notch, but extremely wasted. <laughs> I think this was a vignette, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Panic what? room? <laughs> I guess. What was it for the use when you when you have to well uh, release some stress? Uh, defibrillate? Um, no, that's not. I don't think that's the right word. Uh, no, uh, I I don't remember to de stress. Yeah, de stress is one, but ain't there a scientific name for it? Mm, if there is, it's escaping me at the moment. But we understand. Well, this, this is probably when Vignette's room when she needs to let out all the frustrations. Probably. But... <laughs> oh, That's man. about the only <laughs> explanation I have for this. Understandable. But I'm, I'm more impressed how nobody noticed uh, the door on the room. Nah, Jacob. They rolled a d20 and the perception was one. <laughs> Doesn't the Twat have like plus 20 as base? Nah, like their perception is high, but when they roll a net one, it's a miss. Except for Pinky, who rolled a 20 and didn't say anything. Well, she just doesn't want to boast. But then I get this with Pinky's sense, I feel like it's always a net 20. <laughs> <coughs> but. Uh, I kind of left out that Applejack and before discovering their friends, Applejack and Rarity uh, managed to find to find and reconcile with one another. Applejack had been jealous that she was losing her quote best friend yes. to Valencia, mm -hmm. while Rarity was well keeping up the pressure, but also losing a connection with her friend. So, all's well. There is hugging and a lot of blushing. I wish they kissed. And that... They make up so they don't kiss. Text. God, I hope they make out. You know what? There's always the internet. The internet will make my wish come true. <laughs> oh, if it hasn't already. I know. <laughs> this came out in when now? Uh, 2018. It's already out there. <laughs> Now, with Rarity and Applejack uh, not part of the band, the holographic band, <clears throat> Valencia has taken it upon herself to be the lead singer, and she is awful. Nails on a chalkboard, I believe. Mm -hmm. So the fear is that she's going to just digitize the crowd to be more accommodating. Problem is that you are then putting a whole lot of people in one tiny room. Yep, and as Pinky said it, Wish. Oh yeah, a wish. But you, boy, you're gonna you're gonna wish you had a better lawyer when you have to deal with the lawsuits. Yeah, I, I, I said squish, but yes. Oh man. Oh sorry, I thought you said wish. wish. No, but the, the okay. When how do I put this? When when the revelation of they're just stuck in a room. What? That's dumb. And they show microchip, uh, microchip being sent there. I mean, okay, yeah, I mean, what's the big deal? Until Pinkie Pie says, oh no, if you send as many people in one go, that can't be good. No. So yeah, that's the threat of the series or the episode. I, I guess. <laughs> oh, I remember. Unintentional homicide. Hmm? Now I remember what's the word I was looking for, decompress. Yeah. Ah, okay. I, I... All right. <clears throat> yeah, good. Silver, you think? Uh, well, just that the threat is is unintentional homicide. <laughs> that is also true. Yes. Uh, but one of the few things that I was running in the back of my head where okay, uh, Vinny, uh, you you do know. That okay, you you take pictures, you you send them away, you make holograms. Where did you ever manage to get them back and whatnot? 
I mean, there's a lot of unknowns. Like, can can you even bring them back? That's that's the thing because just just imagine this. Just imagine this. With Juniper, we know that she sent them to a magical realm where uh, duelists. If when the duelists lose, they are sent there. With yeah, the shadow yes. realm. Yes, but with uh, vin- uh, vignette. She doesn't even acknowledge where she where, where, where she sent them. All all she knows is just picture go boom, uh, take picture, uh, annoyance go away. I make new things. Did She's she... so vain she doesn't care. Yeah, and did she even try to bring her back her salad? I mean, there's the thing. We we got no idea how her her thing works until later on, which is kind of dumb. But still, she she don't, we, we we're not shown that uh, by. Doing this, she got a way to pull them back. If I'm not mistaken, with Juniper's thing, uh, they destroyed the mirror to bring them back, right? Yep. Did, she, did they? They destroyed the mirror. And, well, a similar tactic happens here. Not really. Girls all hold, hand, hold hands, mm-hmm. power up to their geode forms, mm-hmm. I guess. And then... Rarity uses a whip, which uh, Fifty Shades of Rarity, I guess. Yeah, I can. I think that's new. That's new, and you're like, well, now, and they just destroyed the phone to break Vignette's power, which is not impressive. It's at like all. no. Well, there, there wasn't even a laser battle. Yeah, it's just whips. Oh. Oh, something's going wrong. You must whip it. When that problem comes along, you must whip it. <clears throat> but well, I think I'm. I think I'm well enough. I think I'm well enough. So. Okay, you you wanna you want me to turn the reins back over? I I think we can. I, I'm all too happy to do so. I, I think we can, uh, almost wrap it up. So anywho. Okay. Anywho, after Rarity whips it, <laughs> uh, whips the problem away. Ah, dear, 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 Correct that way. You know, I can. Oh God, no! Stop, brain, turn off. Don't, don't, not here. God dang, it, stupid brain. Oh, moving on. Does it? Moving on. We, does oh, it he's, make he's the, the, the on. Does the whip make the? Okay. Yep. Okay, fine. <laughs> Anywho, um, vignette just says. I have three million followers, but none of them are my friends. Yeah. Rarity. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Rarity says, I'll be your friend. So does Applejack. So does the crowd. Whoa. That, like, hmm. I, I, I feel, hmm. Like, this, she did. This is bad. Like antagonist doesn't redemption gone too fast. Not even redemption. Like, what is even her deal? You know what I mean? Well, like, but... what is her deal? She, she, I, I crumba. <laughs> Well, honestly, I, I feel like this is a quest for your girls trying to tackle social media and the selfishness that can come with it. Problem is that it's done in such a cartoon, well, ironically, cartoonishly over the top and style. But he did, he did, what, sorry. It's, it just doesn't work. I think it falls flat. I, I totally agree. And the main problem here is that her how do I put this vignette here okay if you zoom back and really think about it vignette here is just doing her job because she is a PR person PR persons are supposed to do this kind of thing like use their influence uh, to attract sponsors to attract customers to attract clients because they have pool they have clout. Because but she's not even doing that. He, yes. 
like she is a PR person. Why you bet a job? And how old are you? Does the wiki tell me? Oh no, they leave it. I mean, I'm assuming that she's actually young enough to be maybe just out of college. I mean, okay, I'll be, I'll be fair when I say that if you are a, if you are an influencer and you do this twenty four seven, good on you, man. Uh, not go, not gonna bash. You got an awesome gig, but. Vignette here, come on. Like, it's. <sighs> the, the, the biggest problem for me here is that they didn't really show her being too big for her britches. Like, we don't see the owner of the place scolding her or anything. For all we know, she could be the owner of Lululand. Of Luna Land? That I check that yeah, out. Yeah. With a name. Uh but no man, like, like I mentioned before, I mean the the episode's a mess. But anyway, let's let's wrap it up by We got band playing music, we got montage of them having fun. Yay, awesomeness. Done. We've got shipping with Applejack and Rarity. Yeah, no, 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 no. Go private place, do stuff. Yay. Oh, you want them to do that? Okay, I, we can we can use our imaginations. Yeah, they, they, they're they're going to share a room. They're going to play just dance. Just dance, gonna be okay. Did you know that there's going to be a esports game in the Olympics? Well, that's surprising. I know. Confusing. I'm losing my teeth in joy, girl. Oof. I'm sure you are. Anyway, 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 anyway. Let's, let's wrap it up here. Uh, this is just strange because we, we didn't really see much. Oh, God. I, I guess this is... I well, guess this is quite struggles. Right. There wasn't much to say. I mean, the... the. Well, I guess I should save that for closing uh, thoughts. We're there. Silver, what do you think? I mean... It, other than the romantic subtext between Rarity and Applejack, there really isn't a whole lot to this. Oh, although I guess this was, was it at this park that they had the guest appearance by Megan and her siblings from G1? Yeah, uh, in the roller coaster scene where Rainbow Dash is just standing there contemplating should I get on the uh, roller coaster, uh, there's Megan. <laughs> Uh, Applejack says, uh, have you seen Fluttershy? And Ray Rainbow Dash here just says, oh, no, but uh, I'm, st I'm thinking about writing this thing for the um, team time. Hmm. And Megan's here like, cough, liar, cough. <laughs> and I don't need oh, to... Oh, yeah, we never did mention the, the part where I don't know if this is considered uh, Rainbow Dash acting out of character. Like when she went to um, to um to the roller coaster and flutter shy, she started saying things, thinking that she's gonna f uh, freak out, and then she starts freaking out herself, mm -hmm. psyching herself out. And yes. that's she, yeah. And then that's when she contemplates whether or not she should go on the next one. Mm. By by the way, Silver, you mentioned Megan's brother. Which scene was it? Yeah. Well, let's see here. Let me just double check because Restria Girls, Megan screenshots. I do see Megan, but I don't see the brother. I'm I'm trying to remember how he, how she even looks like. I could have sworn I could have sworn I saw all three of them, but maybe it was just Megan. Huh? Maybe. maybe. Yeah, it was just Megan running around. There's no sign of her her siblings. Maybe in future stuff. But yeah, that, that's a cool callback. <laughs> yeah, I've got... Well, honestly, Megan's siblings, who I can't even remember. Oh, man. They were... Okay, her name was Megan Williams. Oh, okay. 
Billy. And but what was what was her family name? Well, her siblings. Sorry. Familiar. Oh well. I'll just keep looking at this. You guys keep going on. Oh, um Sunday is her pony. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, Danny and Molly. Those were her younger younger kid. Younger <laughs> <laughs> siblings. Yes, I should. Yes. Mm. They were kids, they were younger, but boy, that that went wrong very fast. Uh, anyway, Silver, anything more to add? Well, that's the thing. You throw in a villain or antagonist with very weak motivation. And then you couple that with a lot of the characters just getting sidelined very quickly. And what you get is essentially just sort of a, well, that happened. Yeah. Totally. And I find that unfortunate. Yeah. Very unfortunate. So, on a roller coaster of friendship, it's mostly infamous for the shipping and not much else. I mean, even people who aren't big shippers said, wow, they are really pushing Applejack and Rarity yeah. here. True. Anyway. Uh, let's continue on. Jacob, what do you think, man? Final thoughts? Well, I think I'm pretty much on Silver's train of thought with this one. Especially considering how shallow the main antagonist is and she just gets off scot-free without any repercussions as well. <laughs> well, I mean, this is my little pony. Yeah, I know, but Technically, even... friendship is magic. Yeah, I know, but even Sunset Shimmer had to fix up the whole school by the end when she got depowered. Also true, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, Juniper had to work at the theater? No idea. In all well, else... she, she was working at the theater. <laughs> Still... Yeah. I, I do wear. We've not seen the sirens since then either, mm -hmm. and they're still without power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so at least the villains do get their comeuppance at the end. Uh, that all, Jacob? So, yeah. Well, well, there were funny bits to, to make the the special entertaining, but that's about it. <laughs> all right then. And as for me, this one was okay. This one was okay. Like. If you don't really look deep into it, it was okay. But the flaws, like I, I, I'm guessing the audience at home can gauge how annoyed I was at this series. I mean, from the the unmemorable antagonist with its motivation, it was just like, wait, what? What are you? Who are you? What what, what do you do to the story set things I mean like when Silver mentioned everybody was doing their own thing uh, the best part was like you couple them up uh, Rainbow, Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy was doing roller coaster stuff Apple sorry, um, Sunset and uh, what you call this Sunset and Twilight were doing uh, games so they had their own thing going on Pinkie Pie was eating trash I'm gonna let Oy. I'm gonna let that sink in for a bit and make you think. Anywho, I'd rather not. Thank you. And we get agreed. And we get uh, Rainbow Dash. Right, uh, we get Applejack trying to uh, get chummy with her girl, her squeeze, but her squeeze is busy doing work. And this is one of those things where I feel like, out of all people, Applejack should really understand that if. Rarity is busy with her work. Um, don't bother her until she's available. And that's one of those things where I feel like communication is important. Uh, but that's me, that's me. Well, this, this is based on My Little Pony where no one properly communicates, it seems. Mm -hmm. And you all know... If they use Tokno Jitsu, things will have been settled. 
Oh, well. Ve Vegeta, I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah. I wish that Nepal was in the movie. <clears throat> anyway, oof, let's wrap it up. Um... I guess that's done. Oh man, um, let's let's wrap it up. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at missiongmail dot com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanso. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on Twitter, DeviantArt, and YouTube under MLP Silver Quill, and from there you can find links to my Patreon and Kofi to support my after the fact videos, weekday puns, and general tomfoolery. Nice, nice. Uh, going anywhere for conventions and stuff? Because I did remember something. Ah, uh, yes, I will be uh, at the very start of April. I shall be in Berlin Games. Just outside San Francisco for BabsCon. Ooh, fun. Yes. Uh, also, uh, Jacob, what about you, man? Uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yakafon Torker, under the user, uh, Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tomorrow Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in a medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome. Uh, you going to any cons recent, um, soonish? Because I do remember something. Uh, yeah, we have a uh, convention that's gonna happen on uh, the start of May. But unfortunately, I'm having a few problems because, well, since I started uh, with a new job for the past six months, I haven't really been able to produce any more pages for Tales of the Ashes. And in general, I was trying to find somebody else to do the drawing for... Uh, the, an art, uh, uh, sorry. In general, I was trying, I'm trying to find uh, an artist that would be able to draw in my place while, while I write the script. But unfortunately, well, I haven't had really much luck with that one. Uh, man, I, I hope when this episode comes out, people hear this and reach out. And they can reach out on your... You, know, you mentioned earlier before. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> and if you would like to support this show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Well, thank you. I would like to thank you, Jacob, Ducky Knight, Master of Lag, and Soul Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Quill. I'm Jacob. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the Show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. Oh man, saying influencer just uh, sounds bad. Uh. Well, would you say you're under the influencer? <laughs> 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 <laughs>